So the last thing we're going to do now is we're going to change the design of these buttons. So if I click on this button and I look in this kind of inspector panel on the right hand side, have a look at the options here, you should be able to see there's no options to kind of change the color. Uh, to change the color, the size, the border, the background, anything like that. We don't have the options, there's no style options here. We can change the label, which we've done already, so I've changed it to begin. If you want to change the style of your buttons, they're done uh, in a centralized area. So this is the launch button, and if we go and change the style of it, it will change the style for every single launch button you've put in your project. So we've got two launch buttons here, and what you're going to see when we change the style of it, it's going to change both of them at once. And to do that, you basically go to this paintbrush at the top. So if I click on this paintbrush, it comes into my project preferences. So again, in the general tab, we've got all those basic settings we set up when we, um, when we launched our project. If you go into the design tab, this is basically where you kind of customize your interactive documentary. So we've got skin, text styles, button styles, fonts. So let's just look at the button styles for now, because that's kind of what we're changing. And we're working with this launch button. Probably gonna come back to this window a few times when we're doing our different tutorials. But let's have a look at this launch button. So if I select it, and again, what I'd like to do is get that yellow that I've used for this font up here and use that in this button somewhere. So what I'm thinking is that maybe, I like the fact that it doesn't have a background. Um, so let's keep that unticked, but let's make our border black and our text yellow. Okay, there's that yellow we went for. So it's this one, sorry. Uh, same one, never mind. So it's FFF00. Select that. So now you can see, and you can see that when we've changed our button here, it's also changed in our canvas over here. And you can see when I hover over my button, so these buttons are interactive, they're designed to be buttons. You can click on them and they usually change um, their appearance when you hover over them. And at the moment it goes, uh, when we hover over it, it gets a white background with black text. Again, it doesn't look bad, but I'm not particularly happy with that at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this hover tab here and I'm gonna change that. And let's make it, so when we go over it, we get, let's make it quite punchy. Let's give it the background color to be yellow. There we go, and our text is black. So I think that works okay. Let's click save. Um, what you can see now, again, we can't kind of preview this hover in our canvas. You have to actually run your project to see this working. Okay, so here's our title screen. We've got text, we've got our buttons that are now styled as we want them. Um, we haven't changed these links down here, so these links are still red. Just to show you how that's done. Again, it's in the design tab in Clint and it's under skin. So basically for your player, you've got kind of three colors you can customize here. The background, so let's make the background black a text which will leave white and our highlights which will make this yellow color. And let's go for save. Okay, so now when we run our sequence again, you should be able to see that window is black and it had yellow text when it popped up. Our foot is now black and our links when you hover over them are yellow. So again, it's just kind of customizing the style, giving it a bit of a brand, a bit of consistency going on through the project. Okay, so our buttons don't currently work, they don't go anywhere, but that's fine. We're not looking to actually link them yet. We're gonna do that in another tutorial. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to show you with Clint for this tutorial. So I'm just gonna save my project. Final thing I wanna do um, with regards to working in Clint, so I just wanna show you where your project saves. So I mentioned it earlier when we looked at this link up the top. So this uh, path up the top, so you've got documents, Clint version three, bin appetite. So basically, if I close my project now, let's just save it again, just in case we saved it anyway. You can see my projects here. It will be, if you're always working on the same computer, it's fine. You don't have to worry about this too much in terms of where it saves to. But if you're gonna be moving your project around to different computers, you need to know where, the, where Clint saves to, and you need to know how to kind of transfer the whole, uh, the whole project folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my finder and I'm gonna to go to my documents and I'm gonna go into this clean underscore v3 folder. So in here, I've got one folder, which is my project bin appetite. Okay, it's got the same name as my project because I chose that when I was setting up my project. And in this folder, what we get 
is we get a kind of structure of subfolders. So we've got an auto save fault. Basically, Clint set up to save every five minutes. So you've got all these auto saves if ever you need to go back to a previous version. We've got the project file, which is this .clint file. And we've got a media library here, which basically all the media you import into your project gets put into this folder. Okay, and that's why it's really important when you, if you're going to be moving your project, what you need to do is come into your documents folder, go to the Clint V3 folder, find your project folder, and you want to copy that entire folder. Okay, not just the Clint project, that entire folder, because you need to have this whole structure there. And then basically when you come to work on Clint in a different computer, what you want to do is copy that whole folder into the same folder structure. So if you're working on a different computer, go into Documents, find the Clint V3 folder. If there's not one already there, it's because Clint hasn't been opened on that computer already. So maybe go and open Clint on that computer and it will create a Clint V3 folder. And then paste your project folder into there. Then when you open Clint, you should be able to see it sitting here in My Projects. Otherwise, you can always use the Open Existing Project button up here. Okay, so that's everything we're going to go through today. In the next tutorial, what we're going to look at is basically importing a video into Clint um, and in some interactivity uh, around that video and then linking sequences together.